Welcome to Untold Physio Stories, a podcast that informs and educates by connecting you to rehab industry leaders who share their candid successes and failures in business and practice. Welcome back to another awesome episode of Untold Physio Stories. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E, with the Eclectic Approach, Modern Manual Therapy, Modern Rehab Mastery, our new online mentoring program, uh, Edge Mobility System, and Updoc Media. And my co-host is... Dr. Andrew Rothschild, physical therapist with uh, Modern Patient Education. How are you doing tonight, Andrew? I'm doing well, Erson. How are you? Good. Having a good work week this week? Yeah, it's been, it was a shorter work week with uh, spring break. This was uh, this recording first week in April, so I was off first couple of days. Spent a little bit of time away with my family. That's right. You were actually a little bit more talkative on our Slack channel uh, during the day than normal the first couple of days. That's right. Yeah. Well, I have an interesting case this time around. Uh, a patient was referred to me just recently for uh, TMJ, a friend of the family, and uh, knowing that I have been a TMJ specialist in the past, I would like to say I'm still a TMJ specialist, just that I don't, it's not the majority of my caseload anymore. But um, she had headaches and earache. So initially when I saw her, it was bilateral earache. And um, I tried some just really gentle inhibitory techniques to her temporalis, some really light inhibitory and uh, pressure-based mobilizations to her occiput, which was really sensitive on one side. And anything I did, even like my, my most light techniques, flared up her headaches and her earache within maybe 10 seconds. And the flare-up lasted probably for hours um, for the first couple of sessions. So I still just kind of educated her on postural correction um, just some light nods, certain repeated motions kind of brought her back down the baseline. But upon further questioning, she had a bit more than just earache and unilateral headaches. She also said that upon uh, onset of the unilateral headaches, she was seeing just like weird bright flashes intermittently throughout the day. And also, um, the entire time she had a unilateral headache, the right side, which is on the right side, the right side of her throat also hurt. So considering I was pretty much applying zero to one gram of pressure, and that was actually flaring up her masseters and her suboccipitals and her temporalis, uh, I just decided it was non-mechanical as she also was not really responding that well to repeated motion. So I said, you know, I think you need to go see your primary at first and then see what else is happening. So long story short, um, the primary basically looked at her sinuses and said that she had allergic sinusitis. And one of the things that she's most allergic to is dust. So just like uh, my family, she had a baby probably within the last couple of months, and they normally had regular house cleaners that would come in. But since there was a flu that went through the family, uh, the house cleaners just hadn't come in like six weeks. So dust had just been accumulating. And naturally, she, taking care of a newborn, uh, wasn't keeping up with the house cleaning duties. So dust was just accumulating. So that was definitely affecting her sinuses. And her sinuses were very irritated, which would also... Um, explain why her ears and her throat were hurting. Um, The headaches, it turns out, uh, she also saw an ophthalmologist and the headaches were because of a stigmatism. She has had perfect vision her entire life, except for just recently, for whatever reason, now her right eye is weaker. And um, she was getting eye strain from kind of reading her iPhone when she was nursing at night. So that was giving her headaches and both the primary and the ophthalmologist said the bright flashes that she was seeing are, because um, sometimes she was seeing them without headaches. It, she, they just said that they were a part of, um, I forget the exact the diagnosis, some sort of visual migraine, but that they can, she can just basically see auras without having the migraine. Interesting. 
Yeah, I thought it was interesting too because it seemed like it could be TMJ, like the ear hurt or face hurt, unilateral headache, some neck tension. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's a good example of you know almost kind of kind of a diagnosis by exclusion when someone does not respond to um, an intervention that you'd expect a response based on uh, you know symptomology or you know, pro- uh, provoking you know positions or maneuvers that sometimes starts to help identify maybe it's a non-mechanical or non-musculoskeletal uh, driver of, of the symptoms. Yeah. I mean, and initially too, upon history taking, I knew that she wasn't getting the greatest sleep. She was nursing a lot at night and sitting a lot nursing. So I just thought it could easily have been blamed on a lack of sleep um, and looking at the phone a lot, bright light at night. Um, you know, we tried things like blue light filter, turn down the brightness. But considering that I was trying my lightest techniques and and she was so sensitized that she couldn't even handle like slacking and inhibition techniques and that was really flaring her up. Plus just I couldn't really I could re I could reproduce it and exacerbate it, but not alleviate it at all. It just it really didn't seem like a standard MSK type problem. And it's also a good thing. I think uh, someone else could easily potentially chalk it up to, uh, again, lack of sleep. Uh, we know what, what that what that does to pain sensitivity, stress. Um, you can easily chalk it up maybe to, like a you know a, a just an overly sensitized nervous system, and kind of forget differential diagnosis. And I think you know especially as you know with direct access and a lot of us seeing patients who have not seen other physicians first, we can, it's, it's good to make sure that we rule those other things out and, and do a good thorough differential before jumping to label someone with like central sensitization or, or something like that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it really seemed like it, it was just a stressful time and a lack of sleep. So poor recovery and, and overall sensitivity, but I'll tell you what, after um, she followed up with me a couple of weeks later, she had several days of Flonase. And then just after going on the Proxin, she's been 100% symptom free. Nice. Flonase is my go to as well this time of year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's funny. The doctor said, oh, it takes like three to five days for it to work. And I'm like, really? But yeah, like that, that fourth day, she said, um, combining that with the Naproxen, it was just everything was pretty much gone. I mean, she's still exhausted and everything, but, you know, uh, none of those odd symptoms. Excellent. All right. So where can people find you? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram mostly at uh, at Spear Physio and uh, modernpatienteducation.com. All right. And Andrew is going through his first cohort, and I hope that's going well. Um, I just finished up my first cohort of Modern Rehab Mastery, the Modern Manual Therapy section, and then pretty soon Kyle will be taking over Modern Strength Training. So if you guys are interested in a -a one-of-a-kind online mentoring program that combines all three of our approaches, check out Modern Rehab Mastery. Make sure to check out Edge Mobility System, all of my products, BFR, ISTM, a couple of new products coming up in the pipeline very, very soon for the next couple of weeks to date this podcast in early April. And I uh, hope to see you at a live eclectic approach course soon. Make sure to subscribe to Untold Physio Stories. Go to untoldphysiostories.com. You can check us out on your favorite podcast provider, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, and hopefully Pandora when they let us in. Um, give us a five-star rating on iTunes, and I'll see you later.